Hello, I'm Pamela Batak. Welcome to the Arts and Fashion Institute. Today, we'll be draping fabric on a dress form to make an original pattern for a shirt. In the fashion industry, designers use dress forms. This is a woman's size six. In our class, we're going to work with miniature half-scale forms. It will make the project go quicker and it'll be easier to see the details in the finished garment. Let's get started. Dress forms generally come plain with no extra details, so you'll want to put some markings on them to be able to do the designing easier. We use in the garment industry a material called style tape. Style tape is a thin black flexible ribbon. It's similar to black ribbon that you can buy at the craft store, so if you don't have access to style tape, just use anything you have handy. Ribbon will work, a piece of string will work, anything you have that you can see the markings. Now what we've done here is marked the dress form with style tape. The general placement that you want to have the markings is down the center front. I'll turn it and you can see down the center back. That is because we are going to be designing the entire garment only on one half of the form. The other side of the form is left blank. All fashion design is designed half, and then we take that half and duplicate it with a mirror image. So you don't have to worry, the left and the right will be the same because they're mirror imaged. So we take the style tape and we pin it to the dress form. And you can't see it from a far distance, but there's little pins holding it down. We generally use pins that have very small heads, so they kind of disappear and they don't leave any lumps when we're draping the fabric over them. The other markings you'll see are horizontal markings. This one goes across the bust at the apex, that is the fullest part of the bust. And that's going to go horizontally and it wants to be parallel to the floor or to a door frame. So if I hold it at eye level and make it straight, you can see they look like straight lines. They should be able to go around the form to the side seam for the bust level and below, at hip level, they should go all the way around to center back, staying level. There's one additional line, and that goes across at the widest point of the shoulders. And the reason we put that line there is because when you're wearing a garment or a shirt, we want to be able to move your shoulders forward like this without ripping your sleeves out of your garment. So we want there to be a level telling us where we use the fabric up the most, and that is where we use it up the most. One quarter of the way down from the back of your neck to the small of your back. That's where your waist is. So we're going to take the line and put it one quarter of the way down. If you don't want to do it with measurements, just take a piece of style tape, hold it up to the back of the body, find out what that size is, fold it in half, and fold it in half again. Once you've folded it in half, you can use that as your measure to put on the back and then make it horizontal as well. So all of these lines are going to help us when it comes to making the final garment. The second element we're going to use in addition to putting style tape lines on the dress form, for reference, we're going to use a fabric. Now you can use anything you like at home. You can use um, fabric that's laying around the house. If you have old sheets or garments that you can cut up because they've been used or they're torn, that would be a great source of fabric to do draping when you're just learning. If you're young and you're a child, please ask your parents before you take any fabric and start chopping into it. Um, I learned from experience you don't chop into your parents' fabric. They might have plans for it. So please ask before you cut into anything. Um, and get permission to use scissors if you're small too. So we're going to be using a fabric. Now this fabric is called muslin. Muslin is a name for a fabric that is uh, reasonably loosely woven. It's flexible and comfortable to work with. It's e easy to bend and twist and fold and bunch it up. So this is a lightweight or a medium weight muslin. You can see it bunches quite easily. So this would be considered a standard one. Anything like this will work. Old pillowcases will work. Old sheets will work. Your old 
uh, dress shirt for work of your parents that they've um, gotten stains on it and they say, oh, I don't need this anymore. And you say, wait, let me use that. I'll recycle it. So this would be a really great way to get the fabric. If you're stuck at home and you don't have a way to get good fabric, use what you have. You don't have to go buy anything. And if you can't get to stores, don't worry about it. Use what's in the house. So we're going to work with muslin here, but you can work with anything. So now I'm going to show you the fabric. It's already been torn down to a small size, and I just made it a long rectangle. So if you were unfolding a pillowcase, you might get a piece about this big. That would be plenty large to do the draping. If you're going to be doing the draping on a dress form, this is big enough for a dress form. But what else that you have available while you're stuck at home, what else do you have that's similar to the size of these little mannequins? And I will, or dress forms, I will say the closest you're gonna have is a doll or a teddy bear or a pillow with a belt squished around the waist. Anything you can come up with will work to be doing some draping. So don't worry if you don't have the real supplies. We don't care about the real supplies. We care about the concept of it. So I'm going to be taking this fabric and showing you some principles of how the fabric works. This direction, following the direction that the threads run on the edge, this is called straight grain. Straight grain of the cloth is the direction of the threads. Also, the contrary direction at the side of it, that is also straight grain. So you have straight grain sideways and you have straight grain across the end. So both are called straight grain because they're straight threads making them up. When you want to make the garment uh, drape on the dress form, we're going to take this and look at the behavior of fabric when we work with it straight grain. So if I take this and wrap it around the form and I make a little tube around the form and you can see that's making kind of a tube shape. If I make a tube around the form, it's kind of sticking away in a very straight shape, sort of like a soup can label. You could imagine if you peeled a label off of a soup can, it would look like this. It would be just a straight shape. I have a cat visiting, so you have some meows in the background. Thank you, my little darling. This is Ink Smudge. It's our resident cat, Ink Smudge, because my husband does inking. So this is, this is her little visit. She decided she has to stay for the class. I hope you don't mind. There's a little visitor. Okay, so this is straight grain. Straight grain, when you wrap it around, makes a tube shape. It kind of sticks out. It doesn't cling to the form at all. So to make the design cling, and even if I turn it sideways, you can see, I'm going to have to pinch some fabric and pinch some fabric to make it get slimmer at the waist. That's called making darts or adding darts to the design. That is one way to make a garment slimmer is to add darts. Now we could easily put some darts and make it get slimmer that way and that is one way to work with it. Another way to make it fit more smoothly is to consider turning it diagonal. Now, what happens when you turn it diagonal? The threads that are lengthwise grain will run diagonally like the letter A or like a big triangle. And if we look at this with the diagonal direction, then we're going to say, okay, now it's making sort of a tent shape. It's sticking away almost more. But the magical thing that you can do with bias is you can actually snug it against the form. So I'm going to pull it and you'll see that this, when I pull it, shrinks around the body and wraps to take the shape of the body. And that's because in bias, we have stretch. So I'm gonna show you that by giving you this little sample. If I take it in this direction and snap it, you'll hear a sound. Just like if you're tuning a guitar, there's a sound to it. If I snap it this way, oh, not the same sound. This is a little higher, a little lower. The lower sound means it is the looser weave. One is tighter, one is looser. The tighter one is the lengthwise grain that is following the selvage, the long direction of the cloth when you buy it. The crosswise direction has a little more give to it. So if you are making a garment 
for someone to wear. You want the tight grain being vertical because the tight grain being vertical means the garment will not stretch out and you won't have your waist down at your hips or your hips down at your knees. It would be inappropriate for the garment when it gets all stretched out to be worn because it would be the wrong size. So anything that stretches wouldn't be great in a length of a garment, but stretching sideways when you take a breath, you get bigger sideways. So we want, you might also get taller if you lift up, but we want the stretch to go sideways. So we're gonna turn it this way and get that slightly lower pitch sound, the stretchier grain, we want that to be sideways, and we want the tighter grain to be vertical. If we put the diagonal direction, which is this way, then what we're getting is bias. Bias is the name for any angle other than the straight line. So a little bit crooked is bias, a little more crooked is bias, a little more crooked is bias, but exactly 45 degrees, if you were to fold this in half and you were to crease it, that is what we call true bias. True bias has the very stretchiest properties. So if we were to turn this and put true bias around the dress form, that's the one we use when we're making garments that cling tightly. That's what we use to make slips and nightgowns. It's also what we use to make garments that have shirring that makes the fancy details that you see that look like this wrapping around the body. They're usually using that bias grain and that's because it has flexibility and you can drape and wrap it around and it makes very pretty soft folds. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn under the front edge and the front edge has been turned under that half an inch and I set some pins. You can see them against my darker clothing and the pins are there just to hold the fold still. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to set these down the center front running them along the edge of the black style tape. So I'm almost just hiding the style tape, but I'm keeping it level with the front. That means my design is going to be straight and the grain is going to be straight on the front edge of the dress or shirt. This one's going to be a shirt. So we've got it lined up. Now all of this extra fabric is hanging off to the side. So we have to look at it and say, what are we gonna do with this extra fabric? Well, we don't want it all drooping and looking messy. So we're gonna smooth the fabric up. So I'm gonna lift it around the dress form toward the back until it lays flat like this and it becomes like that tube of fabric we talked about before. And I'm gonna let it rest against the side. And when I get to where the side seam is, you're gonna see on the side seam, there's a little ridge, it's a very noticeable ridge. If you're doing this on a teddy bear or a doll, you might have to put something there. Maybe if the, the um, item has some, uh, if you have a piece of ribbon and you could pin a little piece of ribbon down, don't hurt your dolls or your teddy bears, but I think they'll be surviving if you put a few pins temporarily, they're coming back out. So now we're going to set a few pins just to hold the fabric. So I'm not worrying exactly where they go yet. I'm just setting them and this is just to hold that weight. And you can see that whole front is behaving pretty much okay. So now I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and also if you're young, get permission to use scissors. These are very big, sharp scissors, but luckily they close and lock. I really love this brand and they're a happy color. So this is going to be my cutting time and you're gonna go past those pins and you're gonna cut the fabric off. So I'm gonna cut this upwards and I'm just gonna leave a little extra, a couple inches extra like that. Now, that means all the extra weight isn't dragging on the front of the shirt, and I'll put that aside. And then I can go back to fine-tuning the pinning. So I'm gonna say, this looks pretty smooth. Now I wanna feel for where that little ridge is or the straight line. If I don't have a ridge, if I'm doing this on a doll or a teddy bear or a pillow or whatever I have, then maybe I will be looking to see through the fabric, can I see the black ribbon? And so now I'm gonna work my way up 
and I'm going to get to the waist. Make sure you put a mark where the waist is. Now this is what I was talking about before. This is the extra. There's a little extra fabric here and you can see when I move it there's some extra here but it's tight at the bust and it's tight at the hips. That's because this is a sculpted female form. If it was a child's form, it would be less sculpty, but it would still have some form to it. So once we get this all figured out there, that's smoothed out the fabric on the side. We still have to deal with this little bit on the front, but we could leave it loose. And if you look at the shirt that I'm wearing, I'll get my hair out of the way, you can see it's got crinkly texture to it. That's just the fabric, that's called a crushed velvet. So it's just kind of smooshed sideways and makes it a little shiny like that. But when you look at it, and if you look at the inside, it's smooth. It's one smooth piece with a turned back edge that's called a facing, but we don't need to worry about that yet. So we've got a smooth flat front. You can just have a smooth flat front, so I could just leave this. Now I'm going to get to the top though and I've got all this extra fabric and what do we do with that? So we're going to look at where the neck is. We finished the body that's lined up straight sort of like the soup can label and we're going to go to the neck and we're going to put one pin right at the center front of the neck and if it's your teddy bear say sorry I don't mean to hurt you little teddy bear but if it's on a dress form or something like a pillow it doesn't matter. Now we're going to clip sideways and down and the reason we're doing that is we want to open up the ability for the fabric to bend around a corner. So now I'm going to push this sideways and sort of wipe my hand on the fabric and do you see how this opens up right there? That just pulled open a little bit and I can tilt it closer so you can see that. There's a little opening right there where I clipped and it lets it lay closer. So once we get it laying closer like that, we're going to set another pin and I'm wiping my finger around the neck. And once I get there, I'm going to clip down again. And then we're almost to the side of the neck because this is a very small dress form. That's why it's good to work little like this when you're making the first thing. And then we're going to set a pin there. So that has smoothed this area out. You can see this is laying nice and flat now. It's almost like a flat piece of paper. So now we have this extra little flap of fabric. That is also when we talked before about putting in a dart to make it shape. That is what we call a dart. Now you can make a dart in the fabric and sometimes you do. In fact this shirt has one on the inside. You can see right there there's a little diagonal line. That diagonal line coming out of the armhole is a little dart. It doesn't need a lot but it makes it kind of bend around the form a little bit. Um, if you're making it for a form that doesn't have a bust shaping on it, then you won't need to worry about this. But we can pinch it like it's a little paper airplane, pinch that little bit of fabric, and then set a pin holding that fold. So we're going to take a pencil. We've already got the line down the center front, so we don't have to add any more there. We want to put a dash at the center front of the neck. We have a little straight line there to say if the curve was coming around it would get straight for a little bit of distance right here. And then the rest of the way we're going to put a bunch of dots going all the way around to the side of the neck. So you can poke with your pencil and twist a little bit. If you're doing it on a doll, if you're doing it on a teddy bear or some other thing, be careful you don't want to poke through the fabric and mark the, the teddy bear or the doll. Now when I get to the side of the neck I want to put a little straight line for the side of the neck and the shoulder point. So that makes two little lines intersecting like this. And so we're going to look at that up close and you can see that that's a little L shape right there. Okay, so then there's the shoulder. The shoulder is a straight line so you don't have to dot the whole way. We just have to mark where the shoulder is here, a little straight line where you can feel that little ridge if you have a dress form, or just say this looks like the middle. And then you're going to pick where the arm starts. So where, if it's a teddy bear or a doll, it's where the change of direction happens. And how you can find that is if you take your hand and put it sideways, and take your other hand and put it vertical like this, and you rest it on the shoulder, and I'll do it on the side here. If I do this, 
where my fingertips come together. That's a natural place for you to say, oh, that would be sensible for the seam to happen there because it's where the direction of this part of the body and the direction of this part of the body meet. And that's where we usually put sleeves. So we're going to finish putting the lines around the armhole and we're going to take them down the side. So we're going to determine about where the bottom of the armhole will be. If this was where the bust level was, it's a little bit above that. So we can just say a little bit above that line, we're going to start putting a vertical mark at the back of the little ridge or on the side seam where you determine that to be on your teddy bear doll, pillow, or whatever. So we're going to make these marks going down. And just for reference, we're going to set a mark to say where the bottom edge of that little piece of ribbon was. We can also put where the piece of ribbon was going around here. And if this was the back and the underarm, that was the back of the line and that was the underarm, I'm going to say that's my underarm. And the armhole would be a circular shape, something like this. And you can rough it in. And we would have a mark on each side of that little flap to be like a little, um, a little notch or a little black line to say right there. And on the underside right there, there's a little mark. So that gets us the marking of the front and we can put a mark for where waist is if we would like to know where the waist is. So the waist has a little line going around. So we're now ready to take this completely off. That's all we had to do was draw the lines around. So we will take this piece off and save it aside. For the back, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a line about a half an inch away from the edge of this, and we're going to turn under that edge and set some pins just to hold the fold still. And that's going to make a smooth folded edge for us to set down the center back. So we're going to turn this and look at the back of this form or the back of your dollar teddy bear and we're going to set this little line down the back. And it's going to go down to the waist like that and it's going to go down to the very bottom edge, whatever you can anchor it to. So there, now that's the back and that is laying flat like the other piece was on the front, but we have it drooping over the shoulder again. So we're gonna lift this up and softly wrap it around the body and make it become kind of like a soup label, soup can label, and we're just gonna set a pin to hold the fabric still. And once we set the pin to hold the fabric still anywhere on the front, we're going to look at the width. We can set a pin for that shoulder area and we can set a pin for where the vertical line is. Here it is, I found it. And I'm just gonna give it a little more fabric at the back. So what I just did, I put my finger inside and I pulled it out and I made it lay straight, like a straight tube. That means there's a little excess down here because the shoulders are wide on this form. That's okay, you can have a little bit of room in it. My shirt has a good amount of room and it. it's very comfortable. So you're gonna set that tube around the form and you're going to set some pins in to hold it using the same placement on the side as you did before. So it's going to go all the way up the side. I have the little excess like we had on the other side and now when I get to the top, so that's going to lay like a tube shape like that, when I get to the top on this, I'm going to also smooth it up to the neck and set a pin like that. And once I set that pin, I'm going to take my scissors. You don't have to use scissors quite this big. If you don't have this style, it doesn't matter. Any scissors will work. And we're going to cut that little flap. So I'm going to show that to you close up. There's that little flap, and it's been cut right there. So that little flap is making it so that I can bend the fabric away. If I tried bending the fabric away when it was still connected, it would have yanked the other side. Kind of like me doing this and saying, don't look wrinkled. Well, it can't help but look wrinkled because I yanked it. So if you clip and pull, it will look smoother. So we're gonna clip and pull. And now we're gonna smooth this around the side of the neck. And we're gonna go, actually we can almost go on this little form, we can almost go all the way to the side seam. So I'm gonna cut off some extra and make one clip 
between that clip and the side of the neck. And you'll see it took two clips to get around the neck. So there's the two clips and I got to the side of the neck. Now there's still a big bit of fabric moving around on the shoulder. So we're going to look at how we handle that. We're going to take this and we're going to smooth it up and over the shoulder like that. And I can remove the pin from the front now. And this is going to sort of smooth out to the shoulder point like this. And when I smooth it out to the shoulder point, you can see it's reached all the way to the shoulder, it's reached all the way to the underarm, it's reached all the way to the waist, and it's reached all the way to the side of the hip. So there's a series of pins up the side. The extra, just like before, I'm going to cut off, leaving a flap of a couple of inches, like that. And this is the extra, I'll put it aside. So now, I can fine tune this. We're going to look at it and say, does this lay flat like that? It does. doesn't need more pins. From here up, does it lay flat? Yes, yeah, laying flat there too. And lastly, how's the shoulder? Looks like I need a few more pins on the shoulder. So I can take one of these and I can smooth this up over the shoulder and set it like that and let this drop just a little bit further out like that. And we're ready to do the marking that we did before. So we're going to take our pencil. This one's very cute. Do you see how it has little puppies? The little Pomeranian puppies. They're so cute. Cute is fun when you're doing this job. You might as well have fun with it. So now we're going to look for the neck. And right there is the neck. We're going to give it a little dash. So let me pull my table in closer. You can see that there's a little bit of a dash right there. And then we're going to put some dots. These dots are going to go around the neck till you get to the side seam side of the neck seam and then you're going to make that little L and you're going to see there's a little bit of an L right there. There's a little pencil L. That is the marking of I finished going around the neck and I got to the shoulder and it changed direction to go down the shoulder. So that gets a mark and out here at the shoulder point also gets a mark. It's going to get that same line like that. So we have a little bit of an L happening right there too. Actually it's sort of a T but that's all. Now, straight across here where I had my widest part of the back, I'm going to put a mark right at the rim where it changes direction. If it's on a doll, it would be at the back of the arm. And then we're going to look at the side seam. The side seam is going to be marked all the way up, and you can do it with dots or dashes. I'll do it with dashes. Normally I would do it with dots because that's what we usually do, but I'm making dashes because I think you can see them easier on camera but you can make nice tidy little dots and it will be very pretty. Okay, so that should be visible to your viewing. And you can see there's little marks going up. And now the last little bit is I have to connect this down like that a little bit and a little bit around here. Now this is just a rough estimate. Later, when I do a lesson on pattern making, I'll show you how to take this and fine tune it and make it into a pattern. So. I'm going to remove, oh wait, a couple more things. Let's put the hip level, we did that on the front, and we don't want to have markings on one that aren't on the other. We want to have the waist in there just to know where it is. Now, we have a big bunch of excess here, but it's going to be a loose shirt like the one I'm wearing, so we don't necessarily need to mark this in, but if you want to say, boy, if I wanted to put a dart in there, where would I want to put it? And if you look at the back of the body, this dress form has a seam already here. That's called the princess line. It divides the body into vertical quarter shapes, like the center, two center shapes and the two side shapes. So we're going to look at that and say, well, we could put a little mark there and say that's where the dart would go. It sort of tells you when you pinch, tells you where it sort of wants to be. But if it's a really big amount, you usually want to divide it into two smaller amounts. It lays better when you do that. So you can see if I pinch this in two small amounts, it lays much more smoothly. Now, last bit, I need to put this shoulder level like that. And now we're ready to take this back off. And I'm going to take these pins out. And then we're going to take a look at the shapes that we end up with. So for the front, we ended up with a shape that has a, let me put my hand here, a neckline, a shoulder, 
an armhole, a side seam going down. Now, when we look at the back, we also have a neckline, a shoulder, an armhole, and a side. And that, we need to darken it in and make it nice and neat and clean so that we can follow it. And those, if we were to make one of these and one of these and duplicate it on that straight line, we'll make it be this shape and the reverse on the other side. And the same thing with this, this side and the reverse on the other side, we would end up with the shape of a shirt. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about draping. Draping is a really fun three-dimensional process. We think of it being like sculpture around the human body. So you're sculpting fabric around a body, but you could just as easily sculpt it around something else. What have you already in your lifetime sculpted around? Probably hundreds of times. When you wrap a present for somebody, you're sculpting paper around a box. What if you were wrapping a guitar that wasn't in a case? Well, it's going to be a pretty complicated wrapping. You're going to be folding and tucking lots of little corners. That's what draping is like. It's like wrapping a package, only you're being very deliberate with very pretty choices or handsome choices, depending on if it's for a girl or a boy. You're going to think about what is your instinct for the designs and the shapes and you're each every person is going to have their own instincts that are going to match them and be a little different than everybody else so don't try to make your things look like other people's try to just be yourself because what you are inside is pretty remarkable and people like me and a lot of other people really will believe in you you just have to try your best to do a interesting project and then ask some adults who you enjoy um, learning from or chatting with maybe grandparents and ask someone who's going to maybe help you could they help you learn a skill that's a serious skill and if you've learned cooking you're maybe on your way to being a chef if you've learned sports maybe you're on your way to being either a team member or maybe a coach of a team. So there's lots of careers in the world and this is just a little hint of what the draping side of fashion is about. I hope you've enjoyed the class and um, as I said before, my name is Pamela Batak. I'm a fashion designer and I'm co-founder of the Arts and Fashion Institute. My husband and I will be making lots more of these videos for you in the coming days. So I hope you enjoy them. Take care, bye.